The thylacine, or Tasmanian tiger, as it is commonly known, has long been the poster species in Australia for how humans can devastate, destroy, and ultimately drive an animal to extinction. There have been long-standing questions regarding the health and biology of the thylacine prior to their extinction. Now, recent genome sequencing has lifted the veil on some of the secrets the thylacine has guarded since it officially pronounced extinct in 1982. The thylacine was a large carnivorous marsupial, meaning they carried their young in a pouch until fully developed, making them close relations of other marsupials such as kangaroos. Contrary to their name, Tasmanian tigers once spanned across much of mainland Australia. Mainland individuals gradually died off after the introduction of dingoes. The Tasmanian population became isolated from those on the mainland by the rising sea levels that created the island state. The arrival of settlers coincided with increased hunting of the thylacine, as farmers battled to protect their sheep from becoming easy prey. The government offered a one pound bounty for every thylacine killed from 1888 to 1912, and consequently thylacine numbers dwindled, as you can see by the number of individuals that were hunted each year. The culmination of these killings was the death of the last known specimen in Hobart Zoo in 1936. Much of the genetic information gathered on thylacines such as how they relate to similar species and the health of their population, had been based on mitochondrial DNA. This meant only conservative insights could be made as mitochondria only have a small amount of genetic information when compared to what can be gathered from a species genome, which is sourced from nuclear DNA. Genome sequencing provides a complete list of the genetic makeup of a single species. Using this information, researchers could gather a better understanding of thylacine biology and population health. It was long believed that it was the hunting of thylacines that drove them to extinction. However, it has been found based on the genome sequencing that thylacines were declining their genetic diversity prior to extinction. Genetic diversity is important in a population, as it means individuals are all slightly different in their genetic makeup allowing a species to adapt to different pressures on survival, such as diseases. An example of the effects of low genetic diversity are modern-day Tasmanian devils. Devil facial tumour disease is widespread among devils, as they all share similar genetic qualities in regard to resistance to the disease. If there were to be a higher diversity, it would be expected that some devils would be more resistant to the disease and wouldn't be as affected. This would allow healthy devils to produce healthy offspring and limit the spread. Results from the genome analysis revealed that thylacine diversity was equal to that of modern day devils. They too had very low genetic diversity. This would mean that thylacines would have little resistance should a pressure such as a disease sweep through the population. Many of them would be affected. The importance of this result is that it shows that thylacines did not have a healthy population it may have been subject to extinction by natural causes. Hunting may have only sped up the process. Insights into how thylacines relate to other species were also made due to the work on their genome. Thylacines represent the basal lineage for the order of carnivorous marsupials they belong to. This means that other species such as numbats and Tasmanian devils share the thylacine as a common ancestor in their life history. This confirmed work conducted on mitochondrial DNA. However, this work was unable to provide a concrete answer as to the relationship between these species. After over a century of debate, genome research on the thylacine has been able to provide a definitive answer as to how this species relates to other present-day carnivorous marsupials. This groundbreaking research has also shed light onto the long-standing question of why dingoes and thylacines so closely resembled each other despite not being close genetic family. Thylacines and dingoes have extremely similar appearances despite evolving apart from one another early in the evolutionary timeline. It has long been believed that convergent evolution, a process in which different species are exposed to similar environments and consequently result in them resembling one another as they evolve to adapt, is what is responsible for the similarities between dingoes and thylacines. There are many examples of convergent evolution between marsupials and placental mammals. Genes responsible for development in both species were analysed to see if these were the areas being affected by convergent evolution. Researchers found that these regions were evolving independently of environmental adaptation in both thylacines and dingoes. 
This means that although dingoes and thylacines look similar, it is not the result of them developing in similar ways. The likely solution is that convergent evolution was impacting other areas of their DNA. Whilst genome analysis was unable to fully answer this question, it is the first time these two species have been able to be compared at the genetic level. It has put the wheels in motion to find out why dingoes and thylacines looked remarkably like one another. New genome research has enhanced the understanding of thylacine biology and population health. This will enable more answers to be found about this animal that is now lost to the world.